All right, welcome. We're, we got our luxury. A couple of things here. First off, raise your hand if that was a great lunch. It was an amazing lunch. Those of you that are watching live, this is our Luxury Fridays. We're actually doing it unique. We're doing it on Thursdays. We are here in Fredericksburg, Texas, and I'm doing my luxury designation training. And I want you guys to get uh, to get some great nuggets here. So we are going to be doing question and answer. We have 30 top agents from Florida, uh, Nebraska, Chicago here, and they have asked, asked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Twenty-three, great number, by the way, Michael Jordan. Twenty-three amazing questions, and we're going to do rapid fire. We're going to do our uh, answer and question and answer on these. So these are our rapid fire question and answer. And uh, hey, hey, Mike, uh, real quick for this part right now, they don't need slides. Can we bring that computer over just for this twenty-minute section? Uh, is that okay? I'm not going to mess anything up. All right, perfect. All right, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone. So those of you that are watching at home, we're going to do our Q and A. I'm going to disconnect the slide for one minute. Don't worry about it. You will, you will see the slides when you need them. Okay, you will see the slides when you need them. All right, so we're going to do that. All right, we're going to do Q and A. So. I'm new my van of white, and this is going to be a no. Oh, yeah, I got to turn my mic on. I turned it off when I went to the bathroom. You got to do that if you ever speak. First rule of thumb, you, believe me, I've been to an event where somebody didn't do that. So, all right. So, we're going to go sequential order. And Mike, if you can turn the mic down just a little bit. Let's hear it from Mike, by the way. He's AV, he's wine aficionado. Uh, and help me with first name. Jamie has gotten learns. She knows a ton about crypto. Her and I had a great conversation at lunch. Those of you that are watching Luxury Fridays, those of you that are watching the Zoom, we're going to be doing. We have 23 amazing questions. So we're going to spend probably a half hour right now going into the uh, X's and O's. In no particular order. I'm just going to go right down the line. So these are going to be in different modules. I'll try to reference the module, and then we'll talk about video. Why video? Because video is not a fad. It's not going away. So best place to spend marketing money. Uh, again, it's, I, I try to teach stuff, stuff for agents on a $0 budget as well as a little bit more expensive. So on a $0 budget, we already covered that in the morning, right? OPP, other people's properties, broker opens of other people's listings where you get permission. Okay, we use uh, do one featuring North Austin next week. East Austin next week, West Austin next week, South Austin. So going to other people's broker opens. Number two, hosting open houses at other people's listings until you have your own. Number three, uh, we talked about, what was number three? Oh, networking group, creating a networking group, chambers, getting out there. Those are all things you can do on a $0 budget. Creating your own YouTube channel. These are all things you can do. Uh, so that's what I'd recommend your marketing dollars. But if you really want to invest money, video is key. When I talk about video, I'm talking about lifestyle property videos. So for those of you that have high end and trophy properties, a great investment, a better ROI, both return on impression and return on investment is video, these lifestyle videos. And I'll show you some examples here uh, in a little bit uh, where you guys can see some of our uh, examples because you get a better return on investment with video than you do the uh, 3D tours, the Matterports of the world. Now the house tomorrow that we're gonna see, it's $17 million tomorrow. That house probably warrants both a video and a Matterport. However, check with the owners. Many times I'll have high net worth, you know, my clients, the high net worth sellers, they do not want the, the floor plans out there. They do not want a Matterport where you can zoom in and go room by room. Not so much where, hey, I don't want to show too much because they don't want to see it, although that might be part of it, but for safety and security. They got artwork. You know, you got people. I literally yesterday was at the rental car rental car counter and had somebody call about my $875,000 listing, a buyer. She says, oh, you're the listing agent, right? Like, I'm like, yeah. Like she wanted to 
go directly to the listing agent. We don't mind dual agency around here, do we? Okay. So, but then what she said is, does somebody live in the home? Is the home vacant? And I'm like, the owners are in the area. Yeah, they, they, they live. No, the house is vacant, but I'm not going to answer over a phone to some stranger whether the home is vacant or not. And she goes, you didn't answer my question. Like she was like pushing me on it. I go, for obvious reasons and security reasons, I'm not, I can't answer that question. I can't tell you it's occupied, it's vacant. So I'm sorry. <laughs> like I couldn't, I, I still don't know what she was really getting at. And eventually I asked a couple more questions and she wanted to know flexibility of a closing date. And I said, they could be really flexible, three weeks or long. Okay. They couldn't get out in three weeks because they do have personal belongings there. In this case, the home was uh, not occupied. Okay. So best practices, video is key, okay? I also believe in farming, 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 circle farming around listings that you have, listings that you've sold, past sales. In other words, it could be just listed, just sold postcards, or maybe even something more consistent, okay? Some people do magazines, some people do, um, you know, various things around circle prospecting around, whether it be a farm or whether it be around a listing or sale. Okay. Keep track of the transaction. What are some great tools and resources to keep track of the transaction? Well, there's some great software out there. There's, you know, from CRMs to SISO, S-I-S-O. Maybe you've heard of that. If you have a team leader or broker owner, uh, Brian's doing some amazing things with that. That's a great resource. Uh, but something as elementary as Excel sheets, Excel sheets with all your clients' database. Okay. Excel sheets with I take a listing. What do we do once we take a listing? Assume you have a brand new assistant or you are the assistant or you were to hire a brand new assistant. Simplify. So in other words, sign yes or no. Listing agreement up in DocuSign or our cloud management system with the disclosures, like step by step, what are all the things you need to do when you take on a listing? It's going to be really important. Uh, the home's under contract. What are the following steps that need to be done when you represent the seller or the buyer? There's different responsibilities. Every state might be different as well. So having a transaction checklist, so to speak, with buyers, with sellers, it's under contract. I, I highly recommend. And that's how you systematize your business. Uh, confidence to crush the listing and breakthrough. The confidence, grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. So there's different things that we talked about earlier to grow your knowledge, right? What are you reading? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What are you, you know, what are you holding each other accountable? Earlier, I was role playing with, with Charlie. If Charlie wanted to start a luxury networking group and I'm not in his market, how can we hold each other accountable, right? So best practices, accountability, growing your knowledge, uh, be a student of the game, always be learning, okay? ABL, always be learning. ABM, always be marketing too, ABM and ABL, okay? And be a student, okay? Always be learning and you can learn from all brands. So swear, how did buyers? Where and how to qualify buyers. So you have a high-end and unique property. You get a sign call, you get an internet lead, okay? You flat out build rapport, 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 but before the showing, blame it on the seller, the seller, the seller, okay? So my seller requires some type of proof of funds, a letter from a banker, pre-qualification, a bank statement. You could redact the, the account information. And if you send over a pre-qual or a letter from a banker, we probably will call just to verify that they in fact signed it. It's dated February 24th or whatever the date is. Okay. So giving them a heads up so they don't feel like you're circumventing them. Why'd you call my lender, right? You, you didn't hit them out of left field. Some things to look for when you see pre-qual or pre-approval letters. A, a legitimate company letterhead, a company that you, you're familiar with. B, contact information, and you verified that contact information. You went to the company website. A, it looks legitimate. B, you've done some Googling of the company. C, that gentleman that, or female that's listed on the pre-approval or pre-qual letter is on the company employee list. and. Their email address isn't a Gmail or a Yahoo, and there's a, the websites listed and the address. Everything looks, you've got to be trust, but verify. Okay. I'm skeptical of anything I see on the internet. Anything I see about anything on the internet or, or COVID, I am skeptical and I have to really verify. But when it comes to pre-qual or pre-approval, I trust them. I 
I want to be honest and trust them, but I got to verify. Trust, but verify. That might be a writer downer for you. Trust, but verify. If you're, get, if it's a buyer that calls you, if it's a buyer that calls you, they want to write an offer. We were talking about this yesterday. Okay. When you guys are looking at your home here in Texas, the agent didn't ask you about, call, didn't ask you anything. Okay. And they trusted or they were naive or inexperienced or maybe all three. I don't know, but you want to trust, but verify. So build rapport with the buyer, but you can use the old analogy, especially with luxury. Like, hey, listen, if you went to that Lamborghini dealership over there in Frisco, they wouldn't let, throw you the key and say, hey, go enjoy it. No, they would build some pre-qualifying questions. They want to make sure that you, in fact, can purchase this car. No different than the house. The seller has asked us to pre-qualify. Okay. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. If I have a relationship with Tanya and she's a rock star agent or Elizabeth and she said, hey, the client's good for it. Okay, that might be an exception to the rule, but I would always still run it by the seller. Like, hey, Elizabeth's got a high net worth client. They're super high profile. They want to be under the radar. Now, I would always ask my seller ahead of time if this does, in fact, come to be a, a buyer that's high profile. Would you be willing to sign an NDA, non-disclosure? You got a, a J.J. Watt, you know, he comes to town, wants to buy something. You know, you're not going to be all over Facebook saying, hey, J.J. Watt just came to our listing. OK, so that, that's you want to address Captain Obvious, the elephant in the room. And so you would talk about NDA. So, hey, we'd be happy to sign an NDA. The exception to the rule might be, too, is can you tell me a little bit about the client, Elizabeth? What do they do for a living? If you can't give, give me a pre-qualification or anything like this, what can you give me? Many times they'll drop a name. Maybe if it's J.J. Watt, they might say he's a Houston Texan player or whatever, but, or it's a coach. But they might drop a name, and you might not know the name. But you can do some due diligence and see if that person is a pr prominent figure. We had somebody that wanted to come through our $9.5 million listing a few weeks ago. He was from a big marketing company, and he was president of it. I found plenty of stuff on him online, and I could Google him and send it to my client. And my client was, and he's really skeptical. He said, that's fine. Okay, so the good news for us, for me, is I've had a very skeptical seller that was ultra private and security is big. And so I had him and he was like my litmus test. If, it can, if he would approve everything, and that was good. And so I've just taken that same concept and be skeptical and trust, but really verify, verify, and then go to my client and say, here's everything about them. They, they, they live here. Here's their timeline. Here's information. Here's their dossier. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, are you part of that Realm Network? Or no. Have you heard of it? Realm? Yeah. So there's a group that I belong to. There's 500 global agents in it. And we can, we can do a wealth engine lookup. So I can look up somebody and it comes back with their online dossier, like whether they're charitable donations, you know, as much information as you can. My client does so much due diligence on the one I was telling you about on a potential buyer, he'll try to figure out if they're Democrat or Republican. I share that with you because in his library, if they're Democrat, they might have books out about Hillary or Obama. If they're Republican, they might have book out about Bush or Trump because he wants them to visually see themselves moving in. That's what staging is. Staging is helping a buyer visually and mentally move into the home. Now I'm taking, sharing with you some next level stuff, but that's reticulator activator. Wow, they, they, they know I like Texas football or whatever it might be, right? So that might be some next level stuff. By the way, you should Google the buyer as well. Try to figure out their personality type, their likes and their interests, because even your small talk, if, they, if you have to be there, a listing agent must accompany all showings and you can build some rapport with them and they enjoy it. And the buyer's agent, you make them feel like a rock star and you make them look like a rock star ahead of time and during the showing, I want to tell you, Elizabeth, your agent is awesome. She's done a great job. We've been in communication. She's asking for all the, the, the she's asking all the right questions. So you're in good hands, you know, build that buyer's agent up in front of the buyer in a way that doesn't seem tacky or, or, or staged, but just, Oh, by the way, ish make her feel great. Cause guess what? She's going to want to work with you on that transaction. Okay. Uh, 
crypto. Okay, crypto. Uh, there, there are different platforms out there where you can do some due diligence on whether the crypto even exists. So I'm a member. I, I have my crypto certification. I'd be, I'm going to send you guys a 20% discount on it. I get zero for this promotion. Okay, but it's it's a very thorough class and it's great content. If you were to try to sell uh, a home and a buyer comes through with crypto, there's, you can figure out more pre-qualifications is it legitimate or not okay if it's a buyer same thing last thing you want to do is call on a bunch of agents with a fake letter so you got to do diligence on your own buyers so that that listing agent knows that man elizabeth has done her due diligence here's everything on a silver platter does that make sense i have a buyer letter okay i have a buyer letter when there's no listings that i have a buyer letter is amazing I got a new podcast we're going to have. I have my good friend come up from Austin and stand real quick and tell everybody about your, give me the 30 second version of how you were looking for a buyer and what came about because of that letter you sent out. All right, so those of you that are watching at home, sending a letter, if you have a buyer that's looking in an area, uh, one of our attendees sent out 27 letters, 26 got delivered, one got delivered back. And how many billion, about 4 million in volume she did, 100,000 in gross commissions based on 27 mailers going out. Uh, best practices to separate listing, determine market value. Anybody remember this kind of question? Was that kind of yours, best practices? Maybe it's best practices to make your listing stand out. I can't remember, but that was me after that. Um, like, okay, so I was wondering, like, when you go to list a one for your home, like, what are best practices to do prior to, to listing going live? Like, one, one second, let me hold that mic. Uh, any chance you got a handheld for people when they ask questions? To, Man, this, hey, is this guy awesome or what? Let's hear it from Mike, all right? Jack of all trades, I appreciate it. But go ahead, repeat that. So I was wondering, you have a luxury listing coming up and you're getting ready to drop in for a show live. Um, what are some best practices to do beforehand? Perfect, all right, awesome. So, so you have a listing coming up. What are best practices in all price points? This is not just luxury. Best practices, you want to... You want to be the discriminatory, analytical potential buyer. You want to look at it from a maintenance standpoint, from a deferred maintenance standpoint, from a curb appeal standpoint, from a what does market research standpoint look like. You want to look at that home with with a telescope, with, with a, what do you call that? The big old uh, uh, microscope. microscope, okay? You want to pick it apart in a good way. You're not going to go tell the seller your home needs all these things. you got to build rapport. But market research, okay? So if there's some deferred maintenance, because you only have one time to make a first impression, is that where you're going with it? So having amazing books, where are my before and after books that we showed? Having examples of those in case studies, before and afters. Would one, would one of you bring those up from that table, please? Having these before and afters is key. You want to create your own portfolio of before and afters, and that's going to help you tremendously. I appreciate it. Is your name Mike? Oh, that's, that's All right. So you want to have amazing books. We've created books before and afters, and those of you that are attending this class are going to get an example of a before and after. So having case studies, Hallie, having before and afters. Now, stories sell. You think about you go to church. The best pastors, the best priests, they tell a lot of stories to hammer home their point. You got to be a great storyteller in real estate. Don't make up BS stories. Tell stories of things that have ha actually happened but be an amazing storyteller. Is that helpful? Yes. Pre, I like pre-inspection. I like pre-appraisal. Yeah. I like uh, home warranty. I like I like putting together a list of all the mechanicals, all the maintenance items they've taken care of. In the Midwest, we have a lot of cedar shake roofs. We have uh, slate roofs. Hey, the slate was just fixed, or the, the cedar shake was just inspected, and they resealed it. 
you know, again, taking possible objections off the table. The good news is we're here in Texas and you guys get a lot of relocation buyers, true or false? Yes, you do. Think about your listing. How can you make your listing stand out versus the competition on the silver platter? In other words, you got that buyer coming to town from Nebraska. You got that buyer flying in and they're seeing 10 homes on a Saturday. You want your tent, your listing to stand heads above the other listings from a maintenance standpoint, from this is going to be less of a headache standpoint, from they've been more transparent on the sale standpoint, from this home is turnkey standpoint, from everything's been touched up and ready to go standpoint, from the five senses, it doesn't smell like dogs, you know, the, the five senses, smell, touch, feel standpoint, cleanliness. Has you Have you ever not sold a home in your career because you walked in and there were spider webs and it smelled like, you know, Brutus the dog and everything else, right? You got to be cognizant of that. Okay. I, I, I blame it on myself. I tell them, Hey, I have two dogs. I can't smell my dogs, but I know my dogs probably smell some. We have guests, we vacuum, we clean, we light a candle. Same thing to you. You probably don't realize that, you know, Brutus smells a little bit. So make sure you clean up and you vacuum and you get candles for the showings. Okay. Anything you want to add to that? Please go ahead. Um, uh, louder, a little bit louder. At what point do you want to? Well, it's hard right now because we've been in the seller's market for a while now. At what point do you want to do staging and or virtual staging? Always. I think even in the seller's market, you stage. But the next question, which you didn't ask me, but everybody, Captain Obvious, asked me this who pays for the staging? Well, guess what? If JJ Watt called you and said, I want you to list my home, and you say it needs staging, you'd probably invest in the staging if it's your business, you run your business. Same thing. If Michael Jordan called me and said, You got to list the home for a half percent, you got to jump through a couple hoops. I'm a business owner. I look at return on impression and return on investment. I don't like discounting like anybody else, but you got to run your business and like a business and be smart about it. So I tell the sellers that's an investment. That's a writer down or that's an investment that you make in the past. Mr. Seller, I would, I would pay for the staging. They come in, they put things here, just like if this was a house, they take some things down, the stager would leave. I'd come back. How'd it look? And everything was put back or most stuff was put back. I didn't like it. My friend said she didn't know what she was doing. Or, Guess what? When they pay, they have skin in the game. They're more likely to leave it. Now, it's up to you how you run your business. You can say, I'll reimburse you at closing. I'll reimburse half at closing. Because this way, you're getting paid, and then you're reimbursing. Every state's different. Check to make sure you can do that. In Illinois, we can rebate the whole darn thing back or, or that kind of stuff. So let's just say the total commission was $20,000 and staging was four. You can say, listen, I'll give you back two. I'll split, go half and half, or I'll give you all four back when it closes. Okay, is this helpful? Yes. Yeah, you can have, just like you have escalating clauses, you can have performance guarantees. If this house doesn't sell for X amount of days or X amount list to sale ratio, I will pay for the stage or I'll reimburse this. So you can, just like escalating clauses and multiple offers, you can have a incentive clause I, have, I had a client, a former CEO, I told him what my fee was. He goes, what if I paid you more if you sold it for this percent in this many days? I wasn't going to say no to it, right? So he gave a performance incentive, okay? He offered it up. He was in his business, line of work. That's how he got paid more. And so we did that. So you might consider performance clauses or performance guarantees as well. Great question. Um, how do you attract off-market listings? Good old-fashioned door knock. We already talked about sending mailers, circle prospecting around homes that you've sold before. You could do circle prospecting around the house Elizabeth sold. So Elizabeth sold a home. Now you got to fully disclose you weren't the agent. So you, you could not, you could circle prospect and you weren't even the agent involved. But do you ever get stuff in your mailbox, neighborhood market updates? and they list all the sold homes and that agent didn't sell any of them? Sure. So you can do circle prospecting. Hey, your home might be worth more than you think. Okay, I'm not gonna tell the 
call on the person. But somebody here shared with me, they bought a home five years ago for $500,000. It's worth one five today, five years later. They can send out a mailer to that neighborhood. Your home might be worth more than you think. If you're thinking about selling in the next year, give us a call. We might have a buyer, but you might be leaving money on the table if you're thinking about selling. And now if you put on their PS, if you want to hear the three costliest mistakes that most home sellers make and what you could do to avoid them if you're thinking about selling, here's a free report or go to this landing page or text free report to this number. That's a hook. That's a hook with a capture. If you just say, go to my website, that's fine, but you don't know if they went to your website. If you have a landing page where there's a call to action and they got to leave their information to get that free report. I, when I did all this to cancel and expire, I sent them to a URL. I think the URL was, because I don't do any prospecting anymore, I know why it didn't sell.com. And I would print off the multiple listing sheet and I would circle the price and circle a bunch of fields in red because I was a former teacher. Sometimes I'd throw a grade on there if I was really having fun. But, but then i put, I know why your home didn't sell, call me. And I'd put the URL. And I, they'd go to a landing page with me on the video. Hey, you're on this page probably because your house has been on the market and currently isn't listed for sale. And you want to hear some alternative ways and probably why your home didn't sell. We have a 201 point marketing plan. We have a performance guarantee. We do this, that, and the other thing. And put it on a landing page. If you're interested in the free report, boom. Okay. How do you build a client base of luxury buyers? Well, you, you want to build a client base and a sphere and a database period, right? So your database, your sphere, you guys moved from Nebraska to Texas. You didn't know anybody. So how did you do it? Quick, quick, huh? So you, to a neighborhood. And this is the market report that Tanya is holding up. Okay. Okay, perfect. So they did market reports. They picked a neighborhood. I coached a hundred million dollar producer, Reagan Mackey, Compass out of Atlanta. Reagan, uh, she farmed a neighborhood with market reports. Okay. Top of mind awareness. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, put videos out there. Content. Okay, the name of our designation is not luxury generalist, it's luxury specialist. Generalists get paid, specialists get wealthy. You sprain your ankle on the ice out here and you're training for a marathon, do you go to the dock in the box or do you go to a specialist? Generalists get paid, specialists get wealthy. Again, I talk a lot about money in my trainings and money's not the root of all evil, it's what you do with it. By the way, I do believe that money freedom equals time freedom equals relationship freedom, equals location freedom. So let me say that again, money freedom, if you make more money, equals time freedom. You can step away from the office, attend this training, hire an assistant, refer out leads, okay? So that's time freedom, okay? Money freedom equals time freedom, equals relationship. You can spend more time with the family, equals location freedom. You can make money in your underwear in this industry, okay? Uh, best marketing, networking, attracting practices. I think I covered that earlier. Uh, how to launch a luxury division with confidence. What's in it for your agents? In other words, if I'm an agent that's currently with your office or I'm recruiting an agent, I have, an, I have a, a top Keller Williams agent here that's launching a luxury division, okay? You need to know the competition, the strengths and the weaknesses of other luxury, luxury divisions, what they bring to the table, okay? You got to know what your agents want. They want leads, okay? But how, but if you're not going to provide leads, what kind of support and training and, and systems you can put in place to help them? You might consider leads. You might consider exclusivity. So in other words, they are listed on a separate website, and, and these are our luxury agents. They have to qualify. What is that prerequisite to qualify? Sometimes it's our course. We've had brokerages. Literally, I got one in Miami right now launching a luxury division. He's bringing me down in April. And the prerequisite to be in their luxury division is our course. It's a baseline. Might be the Institute's course, whatever. Okay. But we'll talk a little bit more. This is these are podcast type 30-minute deep dives. Okay, but that's a great question. So branding, support. It's much more than a different sign and a different logo. Okay. That 
by the way, I've studied all the brands and there's real G brands. There's other big franchises out there. I'm not going to name them that their luxury division is a different sign and a different logo smoke and mirrors. Okay. Smoke and mirrors. Okay. So you want support, you want tools, you want training. Fair splits again. Uh, that's all T Tanya. Uh, you had, you had asked that about splits with commercial real estate's a different animal. Okay. Uh, so what I would tell you is an absence of value. We're just a commodity. So this, oh my God, my, uh, look who just walked in here. Hey, I honestly, I want everybody to welcome this young lady that just walked in. This is Leslie Akers. This is, she's awesome. She is luxury right now. Let, let, grab a seat wherever you'd like. Okay. You're welcome. We're just going over some Q and a right now. Okay. We got waters here, restroom food, make yourself at home. So, uh, in the absence of value, okay, we're just a, a commodity. It's no different than you've seen those memes, right? The guy that's getting the tattoo. Oh, yeah, put a cool looking dragon. Yeah, yeah. And, and he went to the cheaper tattoo artist and it looks like a unicorn, like, 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 like my fourth grader did it, right? So, why should they hire you versus the discount agent? You got to bring more value. You got to focus on results. I use the, ter the term stacking the offer. Do you want an example of stacking the offer? One of the best in the industry was a guy named Russell Brunson. He is the founder of ClickFunnels. He used to stack it. So if I'm role-playing here, Elizabeth, do you see why hiring an agent that he that has a huge database, not just here in Austin, but is connected globally and knows their feeder markets? I know the feeder markets like where people are moving from Austin, and I have relationships there. I go to these big global conferences. Do you see why? Hiring an agent that is not just locally connected, but globally, globally connected could perhaps uh, bring an extra 1% to the sale price of your home. Do you see how hiring an agent who uses video, video is not going away. So not just a Facebook live, but lifestyle video. And we promote it and we push it on websites, both locally and internationally, how that might be able to bring you an extra 1%. Do you see how hiring an agent that is an amazing negotiator that's frugal with their own money is negotiate, Dave, for your last dollar. Do you see how I, how an agent that is an amazing negotiator? By the way, I have the CNE negotiation expert designation. Okay, about five percent of agents across the globe have that designation. We've been taught best marketing practices, best negotiating practices. We understand that there's combative negotiators and collaborative negotiators, Dave. And so again, part of Getting you top dollar is having great relationships with other agents and negotiating in a way where they feel like they won, but we actually got what we got and we want it, Dave. And so do you, do you see how having an amazing agent that's going to negotiate for your best top dollar will help you let net another 1% or more? And then you put in your unique value proposition and you do that. And now all of a sudden they're thinking, oh man, this guy's going to be a 12% agent. And then when you go there and you sh share your fee, they're like, ha! Huh. That's a no-brainer. That's called stacking the offer. Okay, you need to be good at stacking your unique value prop. And that's at the end. After you deliver and you're on your presentation, the buyer presentation, seller presentation, you stack the offer. You recap by stacking the offer. Is that helpful? Yes. Is that an aha? Uh -huh? yes. Did I just help some of you protect your fee in the room? Yes. Okay, another one, if you're not really good with this is pre-put your fee on the listing agreement. Because some of you, the first time you fill in a listing agreement, 6% or whatever it is, you're nervous. Type it in ahead of time, okay? You can put a higher price and discount it, or excuse me, slash it, and they got a great deal. They might feel like if you wrote something in. But make sure they initial if anything's handwritten. All right. How do you get access to luxury properties? I talked to you about building your brand, leveraging other people's properties. People are going to Google you. High net worth individuals are going to check you out online, Dave. They're going to look you up on LinkedIn. Well, I'm not on LinkedIn or that's stupid. There's no one there. It's not about you. You got to do a SWOT analysis. If a prospect is flying into town and they're going to Google you and they're going to look you up, what are you going to do to differentiate yourself? So you better have a big uh, uh, online presence, okay? Because this is a question 
an audience member who's a handshake guy, who's well known and builds relationships, you still want to have that online presence for that prospect that do we have prospects Googling you and looking you up this week that you don't even know about right now? That's what we're doing. We're worried about the other pr the prospects that we don't even know. They're doing due diligence on you right now, and there's no footprint online. So you might not be a LinkedIn guy, but high net worth individuals, the average LinkedIn user is, is a little bit better income than everybody else uh, in other social media platforms. I just started TikTok. I got four TikTok videos. I've been hearing about TikTok forever. Unfortunately, my daughter does too many TikToks. We got a reminder on some stuff. She's nine. But it's not about me. My point is, I think TikTok is, but it's, it's not about what I think. It's what are the prospects looking at? If you think LinkedIn is stupid, it's not about you. Maybe your prospect is big on LinkedIn and you have a profile picture from your glamour shop from 1989 and you haven't updated and it's got your brokerage from three brokerages ago and you got links and websites that aren't even active anymore. So making sure everything's optimized and works. Is that helpful? All right, good. Um, what is the difference to treat each market? What, anybody on that one? Get the mic. What it says, what is the difference to treat each market? Does anybody remember if that was kind of your question? Maybe we we brutally I think what they were saying was um... Like, Grab the mic. Where's the mic at? Here, grab that mic. You'll be my mic runner too. Let's hear it for Julie. She's a great yeah, mic you. runner. Oh, that was. Well, let's hear it for Julie. Thank you. Yes. Talk loud, girl. Um, so I think what they were asking was if you're going to market or treat like your entry level versus your middle level versus your lower level okay yeah not treating everybody the same way you want to be respectful and treat everybody with respect but brian buffini and my first real estate coach who i want to get on my podcast joe stump by refer only and dean jackson they would talk about segmenting your da database segmenting it going through your database and basically what i do is i give an a b and a c database maybe you give an f in a b c and an F. F is, you never want to deal with them again, okay? A, B, and C. A are your, your trophy clients for whatever reason. They refer you tons of business. They're amazing. You, you love them. It's happy hour somewhere. You want to have a glass of wine with them all the time. Okay, that's your A list. Your B list, they're good. You like them. They're maybe not as connected. They're maybe more shy and they might not refer you as much business, but they're good. Your C is, they're okay. They're not bad. Okay, but A, B, and C. Okay, A, B, and C. All right, so that's that. Oh, this was a great question. That, yes, Chad asked this earlier. So Chad asked about appliances. How do you, as an agent, walk into a property and familiarize yourself with the, the, the finishes, the woodwork? What kind of stone is this? What is, is this marble? Is this... Is this terracotta? What's the flooring? Anybody have that kind of concern? Raise your hand. Okay, about 90% of the people are raising their hand in this. So, great. So, go to these. Where's Chad at? He's not even in here now. Chad asked his question. He'll have to watch the replay. Okay, but that's a great question. So, you can go to these different stores, these different outlets that are high end and familiarize, get a tour, have people teach. Like there's app appliances you can learn about, Bosch, Sub-Zero, all these things. Maybe there's different companies in your market. Okay, there's Chad. He's listening. Okay. So he's closing a deal over there. Okay. Uh, so that's one way is going to these stores, familiarizing yourself with the looks and the brands and the differences. What one one is, should they keep the Sub-Zero that's eight years old or get a new one? You might talk to an appliance repair company too. You know, the house we bought has a huge commercial grade sub-zero refrigerator and a freezer. And we called for appliance. Uh, there was an issue. The ice cube maker was freezing. He goes, man, you run this one as long as you can. Keep fixing this one because they don't make it like you can bring in a brand new sub-zero. It will conk out a lot quicker. So this one was built better. 
than what they're selling today. So just if there's other future repairs, I would invite, advise you to do that. So being real knowledgeable, okay? But when you walk through a home, so I pick someone I haven't called on yet, Christy, okay? If Christy is the home seller that's interviewing me and I'm at the listing appointment, I would say, Christy, you know your home better than anybody. The goal for today is for me to learn more about the house. I didn't come, by the way, price. Nobody asked us. You don't talk price on a high end and unique property if there's no comparables. You know, the first meeting, how can you talk price when, if this was a mansion, right? We're in an amazing place, the Edge Winery in Fredericksburg, Texas. If I'm walking through this amazing, what's our square footage of this facility right here, Mike? 13,800 square foot mansion we're in right now in Fredericksburg. And how can I come up with a price and give Mike a fair market value of this 13,800 square foot property when this is my first time? So Mr. Seller, you mentioned earlier, you're interviewing a couple agents. If I were you, I would fire them if they came prepared with their little CMA and their high heels and said, this is what the asking price is. How can they come up with a price when they've never walked through your home first? They've never seen firsthand all the millwork. They haven't seen all the custom stonework and the barn doors and the okay? So, so then when part-time Patty or Jenny Rockstar comes in with the CMA, they're tuning her out. They're saying, yeah, Mike was right. How can she give me a price? But Christy, you know your home better than I do. So as we tour the home, Tell me about some of the materials used, any upgrades, you, if you're the original owner, what you did. If you're not the original owner, what upgrades you've done since you've moved in, okay? I'm taking notes, but also, Christy, we have amazing print collateral for this home we will provide for you, amazing. But you know your home better than I do. So what you're gonna do is, you, we're either gonna work with you on this, or we'll come back and we'll go room by room and you'll tell us material by material, an upgrade that you've done, and I'll chicken scratch it out, or you can chicken scratch it out. And then we'll put it together in a nice, pretty format. And we'll put it together because you got that left brain buyer, that left brain analytical buyer, that linear thinker. They want to know what kind of wood this is. They want to know that that's solid and that's not a veneer. Okay? So we'll go through room by room, Chad, and we'll go room by room and talk about the unique features of the room the materials that are used, any upgrades, the ages, the appliances, okay? The exterior unique features, the interior unique features, unique things about the area in case somebody comes to Fredericksburg and they've never been there. That's how you got to think. And so then you have the nice brochure for the right brain buyer that sees 10 homes on a Saturday, but you also have the special feature sheet within that for that left brain analytical. And that many times can get that home sold versus the other agent that has maybe great photos or has a better reputation in the area. But you cater on a silver platter to that left brain analytical buyer. Yes, question. Grab the mic, Julie. Run that over to her. Sorry, my van on mic. Hold on one second because we got people zooming at home. Is this helpful, by the way? Okay. Like some of this is geared towards you, but these are the 23 common questions and I'm adding some that I want you to walk out of here with confidence with. Okay, and those of you that are at home, I'll try to, on Zoom, I'll try to uh, answer your questions too, if I can. If not, I'm sorry, we're doing the best we can with our plan B. Go ahead. Even louder. That's a great question. So by the way, tomorrow I'll ask that agent, we're going to a $17 million property tomorrow and I'm gonna ask her, is that your price or is that their price? Keep it really simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. Keep it, the KISS principle. When I was an educator, the K-I-S-S in the 1970s. Keep it simple, stupid is what that's for. So I wanna ask a simple question. That $17 million showing tomorrow that we're going through, we're touring. Is that her price or their price? When I say it's her price, is that based on comparables and data and the research that we as licensed realtors do to determine market value? 
There's a cost approach. There's a replacement approach. There's a comp approach. So let me re repeat that. And then there's the Venn uh, diagram approaches. A little bit of all three. Cost, replacement, comp. Cost approach, replacement, compar comparable. And sometimes if there's a fourth, it's, well, the seller's the fifth, right? their, their price. But if there's a fourth, it's a void price, void, V-O-I-D, void. In other words, if you were to look at homes for sale, there's a gap in that six to $9 million price point in Austin. And, you know, based on your, excuse me, your data and your research, you're like price per square foot and what they have into it. By the way, what they have into it has no bearing on what it's worth. Okay. But we're in a 13,800 square foot winery right now. They got some beautiful artwork here. They don't right now, but they will. But let's just say there was some artwork hanging. If they got an $8,000 painting that they paid $8,000 for, does that make that painting worth $8,000? What it's worth? What somebody's willing to pay for it. Now, I could go to Sotheby's or concierge auctions or, or, or elite auctions and try to sell it on one of these auction sites. What's it worth? What somebody's willing to pay or bid? So I have these conversations with my sellers. So I have these conversations with my sellers. So Elizabeth, I, 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 yeah, I know you have $7 million into it. And listen, it's much like, this is like fine art. Your home is like fine art. Well, we can test the market. You could use that term, test the market. We could test the market at your price. Let's say she wants 10 million and you don't think the market will bear 10 million in this example. We can test the market for blank days, blank weeks, blank months, fill that out. And based on the market, the market will speak and let us know if we, where we are where we need to be. Okay? So I like having that agreement up front. So if we're gonna test it at 10 months, excuse me, $10 million for a month or 45 days, I like to buy the way to make it small windows. Why small? What happens the longer, the longer something's on the market, subconsciously, what do buyers think? Just audience part. Something's wrong. What else? It's priced too high. What else? Another agent could sell it faster, maybe. I don't know. What else? Dave, what happens if the home's on the market way too long in Omaha? It gets stale. People look, elsewhere. People look elsewhere. And then what happens is many agents hit re reduction, price reduction, reduce, reduce, reduce. Okay. And maybe they didn't need to reduce. Maybe let's be honest. There's some real estate agents that are part-time patties and part-time Paul's. And they put pictures on the, with their Blackberry from 2000. I had a Blackberry. I love Blackberry. It was email deliverability. It was amazing, but the camera isn't good. So you, does anybody go to listings like, I think there's a website, MLSlistingsatsuck.com or something. You know what I'm talking about, right? Great. So Elizabeth uh, from Austin says she writes that in her agreement. In other words, a, a predetermined date for a price reduction, or is it a predetermined number of showings or both? No, I'll just say whatever. Um, I like to tell them, you know, I hope I'm wrong, but my number is showing me this, so let's just post your number. I write in there that if we don't have an offer within two weeks, the seller agrees to be surprised to you. So for those of you that are following at home, uh, she uh, puts in her agreement uh, basically just that. She puts a time or you could put number of showings in a listing agreement. Check with your broker. Every state's different. Every brokerage is different. But the concept is, can we have a predetermined price adjustment based on activity or lack thereof or time? Great point. So in Illinois, we have a separate addendum. Uh, what, what we do, and uh, we attach it to the agreement. And we disclose, hey, it also includes the price adjustment addendum. Saw so that reaction. Here, uh, hold on one second. So I do the same thing when it comes to lowering the price on the even louder. I do the same thing when it comes to actually the price reduction on the contract. However, I do a pre-dated amendment with the list of 
Good. And if you want to be safe even more, remind them, hey, tomorrow's the 25th. If you recall, we signed this, right, Charlie? Do you ever do that? Like, or you just do it? No, I give them the time. No, I know. But let's just say it was March 3rd. And March 3rd comes. Do you say, hey, Charlie, just a reminder, we signed this agreement. We're going to adjust the price. You know, just giving you a heads up. There's, you don't have to sign anything, but please reply letting me know you got it. Yeah, so get something in writing up front, sign, but also just don't do the price reduction because who knows? Maybe they're having a bad day or whatever, and they signed the agreement. They were drinking you know, at 7 p.m. when you were over, and they signed something. Cover your rear end and get them to acknowledge it in, in a writing. Okay, great, great point. Blame it on NAR, right? Market research, the National Association of Realtors, which is larger now than ever before. One million five hundred and like fifty something thousand. We have more licensed realtors in the US than ever before. That's good news and bad news. Bad news is you got more competition. The good news is you're going to have more average agents, okay? Uh, other questions. This is good, guys. So, Chad, getting back to your question about appliances and stuff, do you feel more comfortable and confident on how you can, A, be more knowledgeable for yourself, but B, how you can incorporate the owner to help you with that? Okay, all right, good. All right, we got chocolates being delivered here for that, that little that little sugar loaf, okay? We got chocolates. At home, you're missing out on the chocolate, but you got you got your own bathroom, so that's good. All right. What is coming next? Dave asks us, what is coming next? Uh, blockchain. Blockchain, uh, crypto, digital currencies is coming next. I'm not going to bring politics into anything. Michael Jordan once said, why didn't talk politics? And he said, because Republicans buy sneakers too. Well, I got news for you. Republicans and Democrats and independent and Green Party people, they buy and sell a lot of real estate. So be careful. I probably alienated some people by being mask optional on social media, but I needed to be able to tell my kids I did not, I stuck up for them and I didn't stay silent two years in my mind it was enough. But my point is, What's coming next is blockchain, digital currency, and all these types of things. This is really important. If you followed what's happening in Canada, I'm not bringing up the, I am going to bring up the Canadian truck drivers movement, what's happening there. But literally, the Canadian government seized, they froze people's bank accounts if they donated 50 bucks for the Canadian truck driver movement. Now, what's scary about that is Canadians are compliant, they're good people, my Canadian friends. If it happened in Canada and they froze assets, do you think it can happen here in the United States? Now we have protections in, in place, but it, it can. So diversifying and blockchain is one of the ways that you can do that perhaps. Also anonymous, but a lot of people think blockchain, people are just buying and selling with laundry money and dirty money. And that's not always the case. So uh, I'm gonna be sending everybody that's watching uh, on our, that's taking our course today, how you too could be crypto certified. And by the way, somebody that's watching this, just unmute, Amanda, would you unmute yourself, Amanda Smith, please? Uh, but those of you that are, you can take this course, it's up to you, we'll give you the discount. But one of the things is you can go on their Facebook page once you go through this and say, hey, here's the pre-approval I got. Does anybody know about this digital currency? And you'll get a response like fake or it's legit or you know, so now you can have a unique value proposition when you go on a listing appointment to say, Mr. Miss Seller, I, you might not be familiar. I don't personally invest in crypto and, and I don't yet, but I'm familiar with it where if we offer your home and we get a buyer that wants to buy your home with crypto in the past, that seller would have to have a digital wallet and have to accept that form of digital currency. Now they don't. With this company I'm talking about and others, literally, they can, for lack of a better term, currency exchange the crypto and the seller gets paid in cash. Is that, that's what's next. 
In the past, the seller would have to agree to be, accept that digital currency in their wallet. Now they don't. That's that the buyer would have to liquidate, okay? And basically there would have to be an end user. And once they liquidate, then the buyer, the seller gets paid in, in cash at closing. Not cash, but you know, it's wired to their account. Is that a big aha? Yeah. How many are learning something just from that right there? Yes, that's huge. Yes. Hold on one second. We got a young uh, Jenny. You don't have to share anything if you want. I'm we have a 22. I knew she was young. We have a 22 year old in the audience asking a question nice and loud. So for other viewers um, that don't know much about this and all that. What do you suggest for us to learn? Because that's coming next. So obviously, it's like you said, not getting knowledge out of it, taking more way, you feel more comfortable talking about it. What do you suggest we should start learning? Or yeah, learning this. So as a 22-year-old, there are good chances of your database and sphere aren't high net worth earners yet. Okay? But their parents are. People they know are. Their employees. Last year, I had a $10.5 million listing. Guess where the listing came from? This guy borrowed my truck. I used to have a U-Haul truck, like one of those on-demand trucks that was wrapped with my mug on there, buying a home, selling a home. The guy that worked at the health club used to borrow it when they had their triathlon to move things from one facility to another. He had a client at his health club that was selling a 10 and a half million. You don't know where your listings are gonna come from. It came from somebody that borrowed my truck. But my point is, if you're positioning yourself, Jenny, as a specialist, okay, as somebody that is familiar with crypto, for example, and you're posting things consistently, you have a YouTube channel and your website is optimized, Somebody's going to Google Dave and he doesn't even know it. And if you're talking about those things, you might be earning the trust and the respect of a prospect you don't even know that's out there. That's how you can do it. Why social media versus belly to belly? You got to do both. Okay. Sales is a face to face, but it's also what if they're Googling you now and looking you up and looking at your reviews and all that and you don't even know about it. Is that helpful? Yes? Okay, we've talked about that. Jenny, can you run the mic to the next person? Or thank you. Okay, Charlie's my, our mic runner. Let's hear it for Charlie. Question. Yeah, so when you talk about posting and doing all that, what do you suggest for us to learn about that? Because I know that you have a lot of we, we sell big and small. Diversify. Well, you can't. You can't convey it in one breath. However, you can consistently put that message out there that we do cute and small. We represent buyers. We have team members that help renters. You can put that message out there in a, at the end of a video. You know, you're doing a two-minute video that's about this van down by the river. Don't forget, we sell luxury homes. You're doing a $17 million video tomorrow at this house. You say, don't forget, we represent all types of buyers and sellers. We just sold a blank, a $200,000 home. We just sold vacant land. So just, oh, by the way-ish, consistently, opposite of what you're doing in your video. So if your video is talking about luxury, oh, by the way, we do this. If your video is talking about how we just helped a, 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 a trailer park person lease at $3,000 because they have trailer park rentals, but hey, don't forget, we help buyers of trailer park parks, the whole park themselves, or single family homes or vertical. So again, oh, by the way, but then you have videos that talk about what you serve, but then you, oh, by the way, just like, oh, by the way, if you know of anybody that needs a second opinion, their home has been on the market, they don't hear from their agent, the only time they do is lower the price, have them give me a call. We give out second opinions all the time. You drop enough second opinions in all your videos and enough, oh, we also service cute and small, big and tall, big and small, okay, consistently. Does that help you? The other thing that you want to do is you want to do videos highlighting, I kid around, say the van down by the river, but you want to do a video where you're touring. Hey, we're at this awesome house because that house is awesome to somebody. 
You know, well, it's true. I mean, being serious, that van by the river is a mansion for somebody. We all have unconscious bias. You know, as I mentioned earlier, I was a founder of the CDS designation, Certified Diversity Specialist. I was made aware of my unconscious bias during that training. It was great. Because part of my training before, and I didn't say it in the beginning, is I didn't come from wealth. I come from blue collar. I got a 19 on my ACT. I was the first to go to college. But you know what? That's, I did come from wealth for some people. To some people, I was starting on third base. Or I was starting just, I was about to touch home plate for some people. So being sensitive to that, and that's why I brought it back to that $93,000 property I sold. I did a video for it just like it was a 9.3 because that is a 9.3 to some people. We're living the American dream, okay? Be sensitive to that. I got in the business to help people. I, so I'm not one of these luxury agents that says, no, you're, I'm too good for you. I can't. That's part of in our training. People say you're authentic and you don't fit the mold of a luxury agent that we see on million dollar agent or whatever, but be you, be you. That's the biggest thing is be you on social media, be you, do you be sensitive on ways you can improve yourself. So for me, that was eye opening. I do have unconscious bias and all of you do as well. Whether you're female, whether you're male, whether you're minority, whether you're Italian, whether whatever, whether you've been divorced, you're, you, you have a different, perspective you're more empathetic to probably a divorced client okay try to walk in the shoes and that was a good good thing from somebody from NARAB I learned she was with ERA in Vegas she had to pat and shared that because we all have our unconscious bias okay great question how to get expired and lead gen how many want to know lead gen canceled expired Oh, that's it? Okay, we'll go on to the next one. All right. all right, all right. So canceled, expired listings, okay? These are all some things that you can do. Red X, Vulcan, again, right now when market is hot and stuff is selling, there's not as many canceled and expireds out there, but you will see a lot more, bless you, you will see a lot more for sale by owners in a hot market, won't you? Mike, where's the mic? Runner. Runner. Please. <laughs> Let's hear it for Lynn over here. And hey, Lynn's husband brought the certificate. So those of you that are getting certified in luxury today, unless you signed up last minute, you'll, we have a, you'll get your certificate today. We'll take a photo with a photographer and help me out. First name. Lance is doing an amazing job. Let's hear it for Lance. All right, question, Heather. Yes. That's awesome. We talked about bulky mail. Okay. I, I sent silver platters in the mail with canceled and expired bank bags for sale by owner. How about having a for sale by owner, like a, a emergency kit? What do you call that when you have uh, all the band-aids and everything? How about a for sale by owner first aid kit where you have contracts, you have disclosures, you have resources that you recommend photographer. Why would you do that? Because nobody else is doing it, that's why. Think differently. When everybody goes left, I go right. When everybody shows up with their with their, their laptop at a listing agreement or their iPad, you know, I show up with the video brochure. Do the exact opposite of everybody else. 
Okay, otherwise you'll be vanilla. Okay, so. Haas Pratt, yeah. Go to the uh, for the owner and offer, offer to open a, a one-page landing page for them. You know, so yes. So that pictures, for them put together a website for them, a brochure, work with the lender to pre-qualify with what the interest rates are. These are all some things that differentiate yourself. That's exactly right, Tanya. Thank you. Differentiate. Bring value. Now, we talked about Captain Obvious, Hotels.com, addressing the elephant in the room. Maybe what you can do with the Hotels.com Captain Obvious is, Tanya, you might be asking, why am I, when everybody else knocked on your door and said they have a buyer and they didn't, or everybody else gave a card and said, call me when you're ready to list, why am I, fill in the blank, pre-qualifying people, putting together a landing page, giving you the disclosures, giving you the for sale by owner first aid kit, well, I'm glad you asked. And by the way, you didn't even ask. So I'm addressing the elephant in the room, Tanya. I'm doing it for two reasons. How long are you going to give it selling it by owner before you explore options and maybe hire an agent? Um, four, weeks. four weeks. By the way, whatever they tell you, divide it by half, maybe divide it by third. So I'm going to say in a week and a half, she's going to explore other options or less. Do you have a close friend or a relative that you feel obligated to market to home with after those four weeks? I'm sure they are. So you have a lot of decisions. There's Everybody knows a real estate agent. So here are some tips when interviewing an agent. You want to make sure A, B, C, D, whatever it might be. We have a cancel any time guarantee. We have this, that, and the other. What I'm hoping, Tanya, is by leading with a giving hand, by building rapport and trust with you, by giving you a landing page or my lender or this or my photographer, that there's no obligation. I'm not having you sign anything. If you sell by owner, maybe you got to buy in the area and I can find you off market property. If you sell by owner, I know you said you're looking for something in Florida. I just met an agent who represents amazing properties there. I'd be happy to connect you. If I connect you in our business, we get an introduction. They call it a referral fee. It doesn't cost you anything, but I'm connecting you with a rock star that's Lux certified. Khalil Mack just sold his home in California. I connected him with a Lux graduate. Okay, so that's really what I try to do. We're building a network here where we can send referrals with agents that have the prerequisite of the Lux designation. Okay, so great question. For sale by owners, canceled and expired. Again, networking through the chamber and other businesses. My video, I'll show you a video. I did a two and a half, I brought in two and a half million dollars worth of videos, or excuse me, of vehicles, and it cost me zero dollars because I bring value to that car dealership. They're in my networking group. Again, what classifies a luxury listing? We talked about that. There's four primary price points in more, most markets. You really start with bucket number two. Figure out the average price point in most markets. That's bucket number two. Bucket number one is entry level or starter price points below the average price point. Bucket number three is what? Two times, not all at once, thank you. Two times the average sale price. That's bucket number three. And luxury bucket or the fourth bucket, we define luxury as a home that is three times the average sale price for that given market. And how to build a sustainable income. We call that repetitive engagement. You have to be consistent. If you do a Facebook Live for the first time, Dave, and he doesn't get any likes, don't worry about it. You got to be consistent with it. Consistency is key. Okay? Do you want to lose weight? Why do most New Year's resolutions fail? Because they're not consistent with it. You want to be consistent with your branding, consistent with your marketing, consistent with your client touches. It's key. Has this been helpful? Yes. All right. Those of you that are watching on Luxury Fridays or you're watching a replay, tune in every week. Go to LuxuryFridays.com. My name is Michael Lafito. I'm going to end the live stream here, and then we're going to plug in for our Zoom listeners. Make it a great day. Thank you, everybody. Let's Hey, clap it up for our live streamers.